Little Rob, how's it going? It's going great, man. Can't complain about nothing right now. All to the bueno. It's all to the bueno, big dog. Yeah, hell yeah. I want to uh, I want to talk about your life growing up. Uh, you're from San Diego. Yeah. What neighborhood are you from? I'm from a little town called uh, La Colonia Eden Gardens. It's in the uh, city of Solana Beach. And it's a little Mexican neighborhood within within the city of Solana Beach. You know what I mean? Yeah. But back in the days, like with my grandma's, my grandma's uh, time, it was segregated. And so they put all the Mexicans in this little area of uh, Solana Beach and they had their own school. And they weren't allowed to go to school with the with the whites at that time. You know what I mean? So they put us all there, man. And um, it's just a little Mexican town from all the uh, farm workers and everything that it's just kind of just kind of got put there, man. That's where I'm from. How big is it? How many people would you say? Uh, I don't, I don't really know, man. Uh, how big it is? A few streets for for us, though. You know what I mean? Hmm. Yeah, we got a park and everything, but it's it's a few streets. Yeah. And you're from uh, Eden Gardens, you said? Yeah, a little town called uh, Eden Gardens. And there's a clip on uh, on YouTube from 1992 when uh, I'm actually uh, rapping on the camera in 1992 when I was 16. And that was right before I recorded that song that I was rapping on the on that interview. You know what I mean? That's oh, what a night in the six one nine, one of my uh, first jams ever recorded in the studio. I saw that clip, man. I mean, it, yeah. it's it's really trippy just watching you. It's like a time capsule moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like you know, it's about a you know about a mile from the beach. You know what I mean? But uh, it's 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 it's, it's uh, over the hill is the beach. You know what I mean? But in a in a in a, in a walking distance from the uh, Del Mar racetrack. You know, yeah, yeah. Where my grandfather used to work and everything too, man. And um, you know, from what I hear, uh, you know, my grandma's house was built from the wood from the racetrack. You know, extra wood from the racetrack and everything, man. And that was built in 1919, and and that's my yeah, that's my neighborhood, and and that's where I was brought up. And my grandma lived right next door to me, and uh, you know, so she would yell from the she would yell from her house when she needed me, and she'd call me Bobby. That's my son's name too, Bobby. She'd be like, Bobby. And, you know, so I go up there and I said, what's up? We were neighbors. And it was just our little block, man. We had like a, a four house, four house block right there, you know? Yeah. Uh, that belonged to us that we were, that we owned, you know? So your whole family lived that closely to each other? Yeah, yeah. My grandma lived right here. And then uh, she gave uh, my mom the house right next door. And then my, my uncle Charlie lived down, down, right down the street, up the next driveway. And I got some cousins that lived right next door to us. And, you know, it was just a, a real family oriented, uh, uh, neighborhood man and um with a lot of cousins and uh just family man a lot of family and and close friends and if they weren't my family that were that were related to somebody else that was my cousin you know what i mean so it was uh it's a small little town like that man where everybody knew each other and everybody took care of each other you know yeah yeah, yeah. for sure so yeah you have a, a brother do you have any other siblings, siblings? yeah i got a, a an older brother and an older sister yeah yeah so i grew up listening to what they were doing and everything, man, and uh, just the the baby of the family in the house, just watching them do what they do and uh, going out and um, you know and always uh, listening to the music they were listening to, you know, whether it was the freestyle music that my sister was listening to and and uh, the party music because she would go down to party at DJ and then my brother would party at DJ and then when I got you know I was going to se I was like seventeen years old going to TJ you know to go party and stuff and you know not to mention at sixteen I went over there and I was handing out my uh, my first, uh, my first vinyl with over the night in the six one nine and Mexican gangster on it. Just like I said, I was standing in line, um, you know, just passing out albums, man, because I wasn't uh, able to go into the uh, clubs at at that age, you know. How'd you start rhyming in the first place? I mean, I I, I wouldn't in my mind, uh, Eden Gardens isn't a bastion of hip hop history. In my mind, it's not. But oh yeah, was, yeah. Was a lot of people break dancing, rapping around. What was it like? Uh, just uh, you know, well, we were just brought up on that whole uh. I don't know, the whole breakdancing thing, man. When I was breakdancing, uh, I was going by the name of Little Rock, Little ROC, you know? But that was a long time ago. I was in fourth grade doing the the, the world and stuff like that, man, trying to do it. But I can't do it now, but um, so I was like in fourth grade, man, you know? I remember being in third grade. I remember in third grade doing the, um, pulling out the cardboard and everything, and we were doing that, man. And I would go perform at the, so that's what, what was what that? Elementary school from like first to third, and I would go to the, to the uh, middle school fourth, and go, fourth, and go, and go fourth. yeah, four through six. I go over there and go perform for the uh, for that for that school. You know what I mean? So I was that young doing things like that, man. And um, so just uh, from the beginning, I, I mean, I was born in '75, man. So when uh, when I was listening to hip hop, it was kind of from the get go. 
you know what I mean? And uh, my brother had all the all the all the records. Uh, him and his friends were uh, DJing that their own little DJ crew, you know. And um, so then I would just go hang out with them, man, and then take over the mic sometimes at some of the parties. But I was young, man. I was like thirteen or fourteen, you know. I mean, that's what that you video that? clip of from '92 looks like. I mean, you were what sixteen? Yeah, I was sixteen right there. Yeah, man. Yeah. So that's my first rap already with the produced beat for, from uh, Sir Crown right there, and. Uh, you know, I ended up taking that song to the to the studio and uh, recording that one in in Mexican Gangster. But um, um, so yeah, man, it's just been a long time. I was I was going to parties with my brother, and uh, you know, I remember going to a couple of parties in uh, in uh, Vato Carlos Bad Man, and uh, and my brother would DJ, and I would take take over the mic real quick and um, and rock a rhyme. But I don't remember what rhymes they were, but you know, I was I was trying. I must have been about fourteen, fifteen at that time, man. You know what I mean? So it's always been a part of me, but uh. Before that, even now, a break dancing and you know, and um, riding BMX bikes and even skateboarding a little bit, you know what I mean? Just whatever, you know, just a kid, man. Had a good childhood, growing up in the, in that town, man, with all my cousins and everything, man. And uh, and um, yeah, just a, it's a, I, I don't think I'd be who I am if I wasn't brought up in that town, man. Right. You know. When I think of that era, though, I always think about like honestly, I think about crack. You know, like yeah, yeah, I yeah. feel like that's when. Just generally speaking, nationwide, certain communities just had crack. It was on the news every day. Like, did did you feel that? Was there a crack influx in the neighborhood? Uh, I, I didn't really know nothing about crack or any of that stuff, man. But I just I just knew there was a lot, a lot of heroin overdoses going on, man. You know what I mean? And uh, and uh, so when I was riding my BMX bike around, man, my GT, you know, um, you know, we'd be uh, we'd be hanging out, me and the cousins, whatever, riding bikes around, and we'd hear the ambulance. In, in the town, you know, going off and everything. We, we would follow the ambulance and go, you know, see who overdosed today, you know what I mean? And so there was a bad little uh, time for that. So we've had our ups and downs in that town, man. But uh, but overall, man, it was, a, it was a great town to be brought up in. But we just, uh, we saw a lot of that going on, you know, a lot of overdoses and stuff like that. But Man. Yeah, man, but. Um, man, I mean, did that, did, did, did that experience feel like it affected you, your, your point of view at all, or is it just kind of nah, it was just, thing it that was just kind of normal thing, I guess. You know what I mean? And and uh, you know, back then too, man, you could see, you would find you know syringe needles on the floor and stuff like that by the you know when you're walking to school and sh you know. Yeah. So that's kind of I guess different, yeah. But um, but it wasn't all gangster gangster like that. It was, but it was, it was some. It was it was a cool little town, man. I mean, you did, know, uh, full did, of the brown people, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I heard the food's amazing too in that place, in that neighborhood. Oh yeah, yeah. My my favorite place is Tony Sacal right there and uh, Fidel's Fidel's right there, man. It's a you know, cool little place. We used to hang out at the Bluebird and shit. Yeah. You know, when I turned twenty one, I was I was drinking at the Bluebird, you know, and uh, that's uh, that's a uh, that's a long time ago, man. Uh in the market cafe. That was one another place where we'd always go remember always going down to the market cafe and uh always being asked to leave because we'd always just kick, kick back outside, you know, but we were kids, man, just kicking back outside by the payphone. Yeah. And hanging out right there, man, and, uh, you know, calling the party line and shit like that, you know? And I would go down with the new rap that I had just written and my boy would put it in his, you know, boom box and we kind of listen to what I did, you know? But you're rhyming real early though. I mean, yeah. you said you are going to Tijuana to pass out music? Yeah, that was when I, yeah, when I was 16, when I first recorded that, man, went to TJ and, uh, there was a concert going on at El Torito Pub, and we just kind of, um, everyone went in, but I couldn't go in because I was 16. Me and another friend of mine, we couldn't go in, so we just handed out my uh, my uh, my uh, records right there to the people in line and mm. and just hope for the best, you know, I guess, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But so, Southern California has a reputation of being, you know, just gang territory in general. I mean, I, I grew up watching Colors and Boys in the Hoods and Bloods yeah. and Chris. Like, were you ever affiliated or was that a part of your growing up? I mean, I mean, I, I think that, uh, you know, a lot of those movies, man, just being, uh, you know, Chicano and stuff, you know, and, uh, and watching the Chicano movies, the Chicano gangster movies, you know, kind of like maybe kind of put a little influence on on that kind of thing, you know. But um, I've always been real cool, man. I never was uh, trying to get into any trouble or stuff like that, but... But um, but sometimes we did, man. You know, and and uh, you know, just like one of my homies, man. He just passed away. I was went to his uh, f uh, funeral a couple of weeks back, man, in uh, in San Diego, and um, I had to stop by and, and and say bye to the guy, man, because I remember a couple of times when uh, you know, that we're gonna go pull some pull some crimes, you know, maybe like a you know a robbery or something like that, and uh, 
and uh, and I was there. And it's almost like if you're there, you're going to be a part of this right now, man. You know what I mean? But he was always someone that was like, hey, man, you don't got to do that, man. You know, you do your music, dude. You know what I mean? Like, you know, what are you doing, man? You don't got to go up, man. Just stay back, you know? And then later on, you know, like uh, one of them guys, man, I lost one of my friends when he was 21, you know, doing the same thing, man. And, uh, but I was just never really a part of, yeah. a part of that part, you know? So you had people that kind of kept you away from. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. I got into, you know, some stupid things sometimes, man. I remember, I remember like we, uh, we waited for some dude to try to get his date and said, we, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like looking back now, it's almost like, what, what was that from? Like, that's from like Menace to Society, you know what I mean? Like, Got to get this dude's dating, you know what I mean? Number something, you know, I want to put him on my car, you know? Like, so, you know, little things like that, man. But um, but um, luckily nothing ever really uh, happened, dude. You know what I mean? I, I, I always, uh, I guess something maybe or was watching out for me to where I never got busted for anything stupid like that. Like, you know, little kid shit, you know what I mean? I mean, even in that clip from uh, that 1992 San Diego news piece, I mean, yeah. you're in there. Right. Were you 16, 17, I think? Yeah, yeah. You're rhyming. And it's essentially a nonviolent rap that you were kicking at the Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I said, uh, um, yeah, something about, uh, yeah, just Raza killing Raza, boom, there goes another. Um, but, you know, I never was really down with that. I never really understood why, you know, um, we were, uh, we would fight each other, you know what I mean? But that's just what it was, you know? And, and uh, so we got into a few fights here and there, but um, it wasn't really nothing really nothing major, you know? I mean, because I go other places now and you could really see where where it's a lot more crazy than where I was brought up, you know what I mean? And um, so when 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 I see that, it wasn't really as, uh, our, our town wasn't as crazy as like like that, you know what I mean? We're a family taking care of each other, so if they want to fuck with somebody, well, then we get into some, into some drama, you know? But um, other than that, it wasn't really like that, you know? So when you went to Tijuana, now I haven't been to Tijuana. Oh yeah, yeah. Right. So you know, I, but I have this this image of Tijuana where just crazy stuff goes down. But you're there selling music. Yeah, that was one. And one time I got taken to jail down in, in TJ two. Man, that was scary, man, because I didn't know what the hell I was getting into, man. You know, that's not my place, man. So that was pretty scary, dude. You know, but um, we ended up making it through that night. That night, man, there's a big old fight at uh, we used to go to uh, Magic O's down there, man. That was Magic O's and like. I think Tequila Sunrise right across from each other. And, and there was a big old uh, brawl that went on in there, man, and we got arrested. But I was invited, and it just, they just kind of swooped up everybody and and uh, that was there. And I was one of them that went. And when you you can't really say nothing to them, you know, they're going to take you, you know. But um, I don't know how we got out that night, man. Wait, so you went thank to the Thank God we did. Yeah, thank God we did, man, because, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't trying to do all that, you know. And then being a kid, too, man, like going down there, man, like, uh, you know, sometimes I kind of trip out, like being down there, like when I'm 17 or whatever. It's like, man, like, like, like my mom didn't even know where I was at. I was part, of, like, yeah, I was down there and everything, man. It's almost like a trip how we were brought up, and how I see the kids being brought up nowadays and stuff like that. We were just all over the place, man. You know, on my bike, man. I, I you know, when I was a kid, I'd ride my bike. Uh, we'd go miles and miles, man, and just and, and you know, hit some trails or whatever, and go to the arcade and the next town, and you know, all that kind of stuff, man. So just a uh, yeah, just just out and about, man, doing different things, dude. You know. Yeah, that's like that. That's what the '80s were like. You know? Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, and my mom was always real cool, man, and you know, and uh, you know, I, I used to like uh, I used to like tagging a lot, man. So at one point, I got busted at, at Save Ons for bus stealing some spray paint, man, because I was always tagging up the walls. I got kind of like a little bit uh, addicted to like tagging, you know. And uh, so you know, I was doing that for a minute too, man, and just uh. I was the only one that, well, not the only one that could write, but one of the dudes that was hitting the block letters. And uh, and so they, they'd always want me to go and, and tag up the balls with them and shit. But, but that shit I like doing, you know what I mean? But yeah. um, yeah, so I don't know where I went with that one, but yeah. You know, <laughs> well, I'm trying to, I'm trying just to Just being pick. out there, just being out there, dog. Just being out there in the, just out and about, man. I was all over the place, man. Just as a kid, man, you know. I I I now have this new image of you in Tijuana, in oh, Tijuana yeah. jail. Like, what does Tijuana jail look Fuck, like? Dude, yeah. Well, luckily I was with some friends and everything, man. But uh, yeah, it was nasty, dude. You know, it was it was nasty for me. when I went. It was nasty. I could just wait. I, I didn't know what was happening, and they let us go, man. So that was cool. I didn't spend too much time there. It's not like I spent like years in jail or nothing like that. It was nothing like that, you know. But uh, um, just uh, 
quick couple of hours there and it, and it let us go and shit, you know. I don't know if we had to pay him money or what, but something happened, man. Did you pick up a lot of fans selling music and, T and TJ? Like, uh, well, was that back then, man, back then it was like, uh, that's when I just had that uh, two songs over the night in the 619, the Mexican Gangster. And, uh, you know, we we made a couple uh, uh, vinyls of that and, uh, you know, like 500 cassette tape singles. And and we'd go out and, um, and um, take them to different record stores in San Diego and uh, Oceanside and uh, No Rock Records and Thump Records, We you know. Um, met them back in the days too, man. Uh, Santa Fe Springs swapped me. This is '92, though. You know what I mean? It's a long time ago, man. And um, that's where we met the dude uh, Peebo from uh, from Thump Records and Bill Walker, and you know, and I almost signed with them when I was 16. You know, and at that point, it was like Hispanic MCs were out, and uh, and so they were doing the airbrush type of thing on their on their uh, uh, their overalls and stuff like that. That was kind of like the end thing back then. And when I was a uh, they wanted me to sign with them and, and it, it almost happened. It almost happened, but that was one of my things that I don't want to airbrush my, my shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, what? Nah. That was kind of my deal breaker, but you know, but that was back then, man, you know, and um, and uh, yeah, I had my dad, I had talked to my dad because I was only 16 years old and wanted to see if uh, he would sign off a paper for me, man, to, to, to see if I could sign uh, a contract with these dudes and do something, man, but it just never happened. But it was close, you know? Was it, it? It sounds like you're saying the tipping point was you didn't want to airbrush. Yeah, your I didn't want to airbrush my clothes stuff. Like that. Yeah, I don't want to go that route. Yeah, so I was always like this, though. Always, you know, always like this, man. Now, this, is all, this is all I really know, man. So this is what it stays like, you know. Is this with um? Was Little Rob and the Brown crowd? Little Rob and the Brown crowd, yeah. And the, the Brown crowd was just pretty much my all my friends, man, at the time, all the homies from the town and everything, man. So. Uh, that, that's who the brown crowd was, and that's how I kind of like uh, involved them all with with what I was doing, you know. Yeah. But mainly just a uh, mainly just a uh, solo act, pretty much, man. I had a couple friends that were that were rapping with me, um, but it's just kind of like I was the only one that kind of like just kept moving, kept it going, man, you know. And uh, always had fun with it, and uh, you know, back then, uh, even the TJ days. That was about the same time we're cruising Highland Avenue down in National City, man. Uh, and um, that's when I first started hearing people bumping my songs out of different cars. You know, so what was that, that first was cool. feeling you were like when you heard? I was just like, what the fuck was that, man? You know what I mean? Oh, shit. The bumping Mexican gangster. Oh, shit. You know, like, so pretty cool, man. Way, way dope, man. And uh, never knew that it would, uh, you know, go as far as it did, man. You know? Yeah. So how did you record those early tracks? Were you doing it in the studio or were you at? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, uh, back then, um, yeah, I hooked up with uh, Sir Crown from, uh, he did a stuff for Aztec Tribe at the time from San Diego. He did Diego Town for them. And uh, and then I went to go see him and um, he did uh, the, the uh, production for What a Night, Mexican Gangster. And and then uh, we went to uh, Blitz Studio down in, I don't even know where it was at, man. San Diego for sure, but but Blitz Studio and $20 an hour for the, for the studio. And we just kind of sat there all day and and um then recorded man you know i was just talking to my brother too man he was like man just like being at the house and listening to you play the songs over and over and over you're like ah damn would you fucking turn that shit off already you know what i mean you know and that's kind of like my son right now with uh with with uh the drake songs man he just learned all the fucking drake songs real quick man just like because he's so into it and you know and that's kind of like me i was going over all these all these jams and just uh learning their uh learning their lyrics and everything like that and uh just, just always into the music and yeah. So, but it's a wide range of uh, wide range of uh, inspiration from from everything, man. Every genre of music, pretty much, man. You know, uh, you know, like my dad, man, in an oldie band. And I shout out to the Velvets, you know. Um, my dad, I lost him in 2019, but um, but uh, yeah, he would be singing like you know oldies like Darling Baby and. Uh, that uh, money, money song, you know, and uh, and he was pretty good, man. From what I heard, man, I never got, really got to hear him, man. He was uh, he was doing his thing, and I uh, heard he was a ladies' man, and uh, um, but real shy, you know what I mean, real shy. So he's just uh, you know, just kind of like me, man. That's kind of how I am too, man. Just not a ladies' man, but you know what I'm saying. But just uh, or maybe I am. I don't know. I, you know but uh, past tense, back in the day. Yeah, back in the day, you know that. Uh, you know, I got my lady now, my son, dude, so it's, a, it's been a long journey and a uh, beautiful one, man. Uh, 
but uh, a lot of ups and downs and everything too, though, you know? I mean, you know, you... Not even the ladies, man, like, with all the ladies, but just all the ladies loved them. That's what I mean. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you call for brown pride a lot. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got a chance to see your show. You got the brown bandana on. Oh, yeah, you yeah. Know, uh, I, I, it sounds like a unifying statement to me. What inspired you to start presenting that or promoting that in your music? Uh, just, uh, you know, like uh, just rocking the brown bandana representing brown pride, man, because I'm not a... It's pretty much being colorblind to to all the nonsense, you know what I mean? Like um, any other violence, whatever, you know, just try to be brown and have, have everybody in the room at, at the shows, man, just having a good time together, you know? I don't know who's from where, or where you're from, but I'm just here to show you guys a good time and and uh, hopefully hopefully, there's no fights in the audience if we're just all there having a great time together and, uh, and uh, not making ourselves look bad, man. So I just wanna just let everybody know that I'm proud to be brown and I know, I know they are too and, uh, and uh, and just uh, yeah, rock it for him. Show him a good time, man. You know. Yeah. Do you feel like there's a lot of unity in the in the Chicano community or Mexican community or Brown community, just generally speaking? Uh, I mean, there's a lot of drama too, man. I mean, you know, I'm not tripping on nobody. Uh, I, I I just know that much, you know. And uh, like uh, like at that rap, the rap at the end of the at the thing at, at the end of the show where I do when I say I'm, I'm still around, I still put it down. Shit, I ain't going nowhere. Continue to make that neighborhood music as long as you're there. Something to play loud, be proud of. Something to bump to, get drunk to. Something to fuck to, make love to. Even got a little something for the clubs too. All in all, it's feel good music, real good music, real hood music. Either you respect that or you can step back because I won't let that be a setback, I meant that. See, when I try, I've been denied. Maybe even died inside. People say I die, well they lie, but when I do die, they can say that I die with my brown pride. Know what I mean? And um, that's from a song called uh, I'm Still Here. And, um, uh, Wrote that a while back too, man. It's just like, uh, it doesn't matter where you're from, man. It's just, you know, it's, uh, we're all here trying to survive and, and get through life, man. So, um, you know, yeah that's, yeah, that's what it is, man. But, you know, but like, uh, but when I say brown pride, like I say, man, it's just, uh, I got love for everybody, man. Like every, every, every nationality, every race, man. No matter who you are, man. I, I like to hang with the good people and, you know, and that's what it's about, man. You know, because there's bad people in every race, man. You know what I mean? Even mine. I mean, shit, I've been done dirty a lot by my own people, man. So it's like, you know, but we just, you know, take it, take the hit and just keep on moving, man. Push them to the side and keep on moving, dog, you know? Yeah. That's it, man. That's how I got here. You're uh, the first, uh, I think it was 1996, you put out uh, Crazy Life. Yeah. Is that the first time that came out or is that? I believe it was 96, man. Yeah, it was 96. Yeah, me and me and my friends did that, man. We put it under, under under Brown Crowd Records. That's just kind of like my thing to Brown Crowd, you know. Brown Crowd Records. I think I think it was ninety six, ninety seven. I don't know, but that was the first one we put out the original one, and we got cassettes and um, and uh, and CDs pressed up for that one. And that's is, were you passing that out in Tijuana? Uh, that one, no. That one, I, that that one, I remember doing that. I was just doing that for the album that I had, um, the first one I did, you know, when I was sixteen and. I was probably passing them out everywhere anyways, you know, and then just taking them, you know, to the um, indoor swap meets on consignment, man, and just uh, dropping them off and then go pick up my money later. But it wasn't much, you know what I mean? Your um, samples on that were crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, to this day, you have so many fans who reference that album and just the music choices. That you yeah, remember. yeah. And I just like, uh, you know, I just like uh, writing music to... Uh, or writing raps to songs that I like, you know what I mean? And so when I hear a song that I like, it's almost like I want to sample it, you know what I mean? I love that. And obviously, you know, all the fans love that because that's what they that's what they want, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, from me, they want a crazy life part two. And, uh, you know, but when it comes to samples nowadays, I can't really, I can't really sample like that because, you know, either it comes off the shelf or, you know, you ain't, you ain't getting nothing from it at all, you know? So even though I do it just for the love of it anyways, it's not, it's not, it's not for money or nothing, man. I'm, Really having a good time, showing the people a good time, and um, and and showing they got someone that's uh, representing them the way that I am, you know. Did you run into challenges with that with the samples once everyone started getting hit with sample clearances? Oh yeah, yeah. And then when I when I signed with Upstairs Records, it was a, a different story to where we you know tried to do everything uh, you know correctly and pay for the samples. So we had to try to like not use so many samples. You know what I mean? But we did on, on a couple, man. We did like, you know, like uh, Evelyn Champagne King on Neighborhood Music. Um, you know, not really samples, but that that was a sample. But uh, 
like do it with the different fingers and I did with fingers, but that that's uh, almost like a remake of uh, do it from uh, the Barquets and you know. But um, but Crazy Life was a lot of samples, man. Like I don't even know what was on it, man. But I remember sampling the Prince. If I was your girlfriend, sampled. Um, damn, I can't remember right now, man. But a lot of samples, a lot of samples. It was all samples of breakbeats. Yeah, you know what I mean. Isley Brothers, everything, everything that was cool to me, you know. The the title Crazy Life, you know, it's it stands out to me because of, of well, a couple of things you said just today, right? You talked about how you've had different people do you wrong or just th things you would see riding your bike, you know, and and you were also you also had been shot. You also got shot in the face, I think, a couple of years before that. If I'm yeah, I got shot when I was eighteen, you know. So so if you look at that clip from ninety two, you imagine me growing up two maybe two years from that, you know, I mean? I'm still a kid, man, you know. And uh, yeah, it's got 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 shot in the face, man. And one of them got shot too. But you know, not trying to glorify that at all, man. But uh, the the, the only thing I learned about that, not the only thing, but the best part of it all, man, is that neither one of us died, man. And uh, and um, it could have been a hell of a lot worse than it did, man. You know what I mean? Surprised I didn't go to jail. I don't know, man. I wasn't supposed to walk or talk again, you know. So. That's what it was. It got lies in my spinal cord, and I was supposed to wake up paralyzed, man. So that was kind of a scary uh, thing to hear, you know, from the from the doctor before they put me under, you know. What what happened? Um, just uh, just being out, man. Uh, being out. It was a bad night for me, man. You know, it's a bad night for me. Obviously, it continued to be a bad night for me, yeah. and that topped it off, you know. But um, yeah, some guys just came down to the town and and drove through. We didn't recognize the car, and it was it was like two forty five in the morning, and you know, I threw a little whistle and we jumped in the car to go see who they were and they went down that way. And we, by the time we were going to see who they were, they came back this way and then, you know, just kind of met up with them and then bam, they fucking busted through the, through the door and then we chased them back to the end and to the stop sign, man. And they were bla blasting one way and we were blasting the other way, man. And and, um, and I got hit with the bullet, man. So, wow. and then one of them, I think I got a little spray too from, from a shotgun, you know, so through the window or, or, you know, don't know how it happened, but then that was a crazy night, man. And uh, and then uh, driving to the hospital and everything was a crazy night because we, you know, everybody got arrested and shit because it was a big old fight outside the uh, the hospital and everything, man. And, um, you know, my homie threw a shotgun into the, into the, into the bushes where, you know, kids walked, kids walked from uh, elementary school. <laughs> they, just, they walked, but we dumped the fucking thing. <laughs> But it's just like just crazy, man. Like just stupid, man. But I'm just glad we got we all got past that and and, uh, and we're able to keep on moving, dude. You know what I mean? Because a lot of things could have went wrong that night. You know what I mean? Did Not just me dying, but just you know everything else, anything else. Like survive something like that, and then all of a sudden you're you're in big trouble, man. You know? I mean, it sounds like a lot did go wrong, and then yeah. fortunately, a lot went right. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. Well, then, you know, and then that leads to, you know, having my jaw wired shut for seven weeks, man, and uh, and having to be home and having a, a trach, a trach, you know. So I had a hole in my throat, so I could breathe. So I had to put a piece of tape over my 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 throat right here, so I could breathe, because that had cut me right here to, to and put a balloon in there so I could breathe uh, for the surgery and everything like that, man. So it was a trach, and. Uh, they would inflate it and deflate it, and it would, I would cough at the top of my fucking lungs, and it would fucking hurt, man. And uh, and then when they sent me home, you know, I had to have it clean, like with a little vacuum that you put in your throat, and you clean out all the mucus and everything like that, man. So I was out for a minute, dude, for, you know, just, uh, and so when I finally, uh, and I had my jaw wired shut and everything for like seven weeks, and every time I wanted to leave the pad, man, I, you know, I saw the hurt in my mom. And she would start crying every time I would leave the pad, and I would throw a little attitude and shit too, like ah, I'm just going over here, fine, I won't go then, you know what I mean? Like, uh, so you know, just being that way with my mom and uh, seeing her later on and everything that she went through, it just kind of like, damn, okay, wait a minute, That's, this shit ain't cool, you know what I mean? Mm. So, but you know, but still, you know, it's still after that, and the crazy life came out, I was still talking a little bit of shit, you know, not too bad, but almost like, ha ha, you didn't get me. Kind of shit is that you know like fucking playing with death you know <laughs> fucking that's not that's not real cool either too man but it sounded good it sounded good at the time she was bumping but you know sound like it sounded like um you didn't know who it was it was just other cats on the block 
Uh, yeah, no. I actually went to school with them and stuff, too. It's kind of weird, man, you know? Yeah. And the fights at school and stuff like that, just over over, over that kind of thing, you know? It was kind of, kind of stupid and shit, you know? But not proud of it, but it was something that I went through and, and something that made me, you know, who I am right now, man. Yeah, I mean, I think you, you, uh, you sound like you learn from that experience. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I definitely, mean, definitely don't want my son going through all that, you know, you know, being out there, you know, you know, I don't want him out there acting a fool. And that's what's cool about these shows that we're doing right now. I want to take him on the stage with me and, and let him rock his, uh, his little three minutes and seven seconds. Hey, he's fucking out there rocking a big old stage with a big old sound system for a big old crowd, man. And, uh, and it's just a, it's a blessing for him to go out there and just, uh, be able to see how many, how many of these people just respect, you know, they respect his dad like that, man. They respect little Rob like that, man. And then, and, and uh, for me to bring him out there to see all that, man, it's a, it's a great thing, man. And let him see how I treat people. And, uh, and he treats people the same way, man. Real cool kid, man, you know. Did that experience make you more focused on music? Did you have like a different battery in your back? Like, uh, a lot of times when people run into those songs. I don't even know. I don't, yeah, I don't even know how I finished Crazy Life. I only did, I only did two songs. What did I do? I did... Uh, Crazy Life and uh, no, I did a uh, Over the Night Mexican Gangster when I was sixteen. I did uh, Brown Crowd, Switching Gone, then that group San Diego song when I was seventeen, and then uh, and then I got shot when I was eighteen. I just kind of like so so I finished the album when I was twenty. It came out when I was twenty, so it's just kind of so it's a it's a from sixteen to twenty right there. But I don't know how long it took after I you know my jaw got you know. And, you know, they took the wires out of my jaw and everything, man. I, I don't know how long it was, but pretty fast, man. I got back in that fucking studio and, and, and rapped again, man. So, it's, you know. You're pretty prolific. I mean, you got, what, Crazy Life in, in 96, 97, I think. You've got Natural High, 99, 2001, Can't Keep a Good Man Down, 2002, the, the album. I mean... Yeah. Whatever you were experiencing didn't seem like it slowed you up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, then there's times too, man. Like walking out the studio, man. Just wa watching out for my, you know. I would go to the studio by myself, man, and just uh, and walk out watching out, like you know, like who's out there, you know. Because um, I would get some threats for that too, man. To watch it when I come out the studio and shit, you know what I mean? I'm like, fuck. I'm gonna finish this motherfucker anyways, you know. So. Um, so yeah, but um, yeah, I've been doing it for a long time, man. And uh, yeah, so the Crazy Life came out. We did that and then gave it to Familia Records and ended up with uh, like low profile records and, uh, and royalty and, 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 and them dudes, man. And, um, you know, so I mean, but with, with everything that happened with between everybody, man, I ain't got no beef with nobody, man. And uh, and I appreciate everything that anyone's ever done. There might there might have been some miscommunications and stuff, man. but. Uh, no matter what I went through, the ups and downs, man. It's uh, I'm just I'm proud to be where I'm at right now, and uh, and, and I'm happy and I'm comfortable, and uh, and I guess the main part about it is that I, is I'm happy, man. I'm cool, you know. Yeah. You know, so but been a long time. Yeah, uh, natural high, can't keep a good man down. Um, and then I did the last laugh project, and then uh, yeah, then the album. Yeah, I just that, that's when I signed with Upstairs Records when I did the album, and I believe 2003 or something, 2002. I mean, you had a big turning point, at least commercially, with uh, uh, 12, 12, 18 part one, right? Yeah, yeah. And that one had Summer Nights on it. Right. And that is that is a national song. It is number 36 on the Billboard 100, number 13 on the rap charts. Yeah. I mean, almost nobody who picks up a microphone ever yeah. experiences that type of success. Yeah, man, I was just talking to Fingers the other day too, man, about that song because uh, he, well, he was actually telling somebody else about that song and I, I couldn't remember, man. Like I said, I can't remember a lot of things. I have a lot of stories, but I just can't remember, man, you know? Um, but uh, yeah, he said he showed me that beat that day and, and uh, I stayed right there in the studio and I, and I wrote it on the spot and recorded it and that was it, man. Just one day right there, man. And he wrote the hook, and then I just went in and changed little uh, parts of it to sound more Chicano, I guess, you know, with the with the with the calo in it, you know, and and uh, and uh, but that was about it, man. That and history was made with that one, dude. And it's like, uh, you know, uh, kind of changed my life, you know what I mean? Because I mean, 
to this day. I mean, still rocking it. You were at the show the other day with me, man, and you saw when, when that song comes on, it's just like, you know, just the feel good, feel good music, man. And that's what it's all about right there, man. And everybody's having a good time. And, um, and uh, yeah, it just kind of changed my life for the longevity, man. Did it, did it feel like when you went outside, could you feel how popular that song was, right? For example, you mentioned, you know, growing up and you could hear people, you know, jamming those tracks that you made at, earlier in your life, but it felt more local. Did it feel more national? Did it feel bigger? When oh, yeah, yeah. Sometimes? Well, I was like, like a, you know, I was flying to the East Coast and doing shows over there, man. I was flying all over the place, man, and uh, and uh, and doing shows because of that song. And uh, but and started getting noticed a lot more, too, man, uh, everywhere I went, man. So it was... That was kind of crazy, man, to get noticed everywhere I went, you know, and yeah, that that, that part's crazy, you know, because it could be a good thing or a bad thing, you know, like to get noticed. And I don't know what it's going to be until until that happens, you know, so um, but um, but yeah, way, way dope, man, way dope. And it just that song just I totally changed my life. Before that, it was neighborhood music. Neighborhood music was on like Power 106 and on the top four at four, top seven at seven with Tito, man. And uh. And it was number one all the time, man. I would come home from work and we'd be drinking and, and just uh, celebrating the song being number one on the radio. It's me and my brother and a couple of homies of mine and and um, just celebrating that the jam was on the radio like that, man. And uh, it felt good, you know? Neighborhood music? Oh, that was neighborhood music, yeah. So that was before, before Summer Nights. But when Summer Nights hit, that, that, was, that was the one, man, you know? What kind of work were you doing to where you would come home and hear your song number one on the radio? Oh, yeah, yeah. That was, I, I, yeah, I talked about it before, too. But it was just a, a shipping receiving job down in Mira Mesa, you know? Um, and my brother, my brother was my manager, you know? And my compa is my, my co-worker and shit, man. And we would just be back to fucking around pretty much and shit, man. But, uh, and I kind of like show up when I, I show up late all the time. I'm never late no more. But I would just get up and show up when I wanted to, and you know, shout out to my boss Terry. He was he was cool, man, and uh, he he's a uh, oh man. He would give us Christmas bonuses, man. They were big old bonuses, dude. I was like, damn, right on, man. You know what I mean? And uh, so I always had a, a job and always working, man, and um, just to have that uh, that money always coming in. You know what I mean? You never know what's gonna happen, dude. You know, the rap thing is just uh, something that we're where I. I've seen a lot of people just go broke anyways, you know what I mean? Spend all your money real quick. I mean, I'm guilty of that, man. I spent a lot of money on on stupid things, on Impala parts and, you know, for the cars that never to get done and just like wasted so much fucking money on stupid shit like that, man. And, uh, and uh, yeah, so I could see how most rappers end up broke and that ain't no joke, you know? Real easy, you know? Because you expect the money to keep coming in like that and then, and, so, and then one day it just doesn't no more, you know? So then what do you do? Shit. It's like I got something else that I'm doing, you know? So that's kind of what my mentality was with that. Uh, bring Out the Freaking You. Yeah. That one was also another another big song. Yeah, big song, yeah. What, is your, what did your mom think about what was happening <laughs> with your music at this point in time, right? Because you just talked, you mentioned how she felt, you know, after you came out of the hospital and you were recovering. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You fast forward, what, this is 13 years now, I guess, after that, maybe 10, 12. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Call yeah. it 13 years after that. What does she think? Well, she, she always been down. She always been down with me, dude. I mean, they, they took me to the store to buy albums all the time of different things, man. And um, and for some of the records that I bought, you had to be a certain age to, to be able to buy them, so they would buy them for me. And next thing you know, I'm fucking playing, hey, we want some pussy, hey, right? Young kid fucking just bumping that shit, dude. Like, you know, so two life crucial. Oh my God, what the fuck is going on, right? So, you know, so, uh, you know, so I'd be in my room bumping music and writing music and everything, man. And uh, and then one day she saw uh, Bring Out the Freaking You video on um, on MTV Threads. And, and she and she, she called me out the room and and uh, she goes, you know, this is what you do. You're on the TV, you're on the TV. Like, she didn't really know I was really doing all that. She knew I was rapping, but she knew I, she didn't know I was going to that level yet, you know? So that was kind of cool and a, and a surprise to her, but she's, you know, she's cool people, man. My mom's real cool, man. I'm I'm a reflection of her too, man, and uh, and uh, I'm just so proud of me, man. And uh, she tells everybody she meets that that I'm her son, like you know. So that's a cool thing, dude. And uh, yeah, just real proud of me, dude. You know. How'd that feel? It must have felt amazing when your mom's telling you she saw you on TV. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, I already knew it was gonna be there. You know what I mean? So I was like, oh yeah, mom, that's what I do, dude. Like, you know. So it's kind of funny, man. It's kind of a little funny story and shit. But uh, but she always knew that I was rapping, and you know, like I said, I had my put my songs playing over and over and over and and writing them and, and annoying the fuck out of everybody in my house, you know, because I'm 
doing that all day. But uh, but hey, man, it worked out, man. That's that was my pastime. That's what I like doing, you know. Yeah. And um, yeah. So that music kind of saved my life, I would think, you know. Yeah. For sure, man. It definitely sounds like it. And she's very proud of me, man. So that's the, that's the dopest thing, man. And you know, and yeah, and she can be proud of me. I'm not gonna make her look bad. I'm not gonna embarrass embarrass my family and, and and do some stupid shit. You know what I mean? So. That's a that's a big thing to me. I'm not gonna embarrass my family. Uh, like I said, man, I'm not gonna embarrass my team, man. Thank you, man, for everything you do. And uh, I'm not gonna embarrass my family, but my lady and my son, man. You know what I mean? I gotta make it home every night and, uh, and make sure he's taken care of too, and they're taken care of. So, yeah, yeah, man. You know, that was you know to me, it looks like a commercial turning point, right? From neighborhood music forward you know yeah, i think yeah. your next four albums end up charting on the bill oh, see, and, 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 and see bring out the freak in you too like i like i say man that's my uh that's my like egyptian lover type rap you know what i mean because i was brought up on, on that too man and you know he's always dialed the freak and all these all these freaky freaky jams and i gotta bring out the freak you know like uh so that's my egyptian lover type of flow type of thing man so shout out to egyptian lover big dog thank you for the music hey um and i always grew up on listening to that break dancing break dancing times and you know all that, man. So Uncle Jam's Army and I mean, everything, man. I don't know, there's so many things I listen to. Um, but um, so that was my bring out the freaking you, my Egyptian lover type jam, you know? You know, you've had a couple of people in, in, in different conversations you've had recently who refer to you as the Jay-Z of Chicano hip hop. Yeah. I'm, you, do you remember that? Have you seen that? Yeah, I've seen that, yeah, yeah. How, do you, that, how does that statement hit you? Yeah, I mean, I don't know, man. I'm not trying to be, you know, I'm not trying to be anything like that, man, or just uh, thank you guys. I appreciate it, man. You know, I do the music for you guys and uh, I'm hoping you guys like it and everything. So if you're gonna call me that one, then I guess you guys like it, man. So that's a, that's a, that's a great thing, man. And uh, you know, and that's what I do it for anyways, man. I show people a good time, hoping you're bumping my music. And, uh, and uh, you know, this past round that I've been doing with all these shows with uh, MC Magic, man, shout out to him and D and, Biggie Bash, and uh, we've been rocking these shows for the past four or five years now. And um, I've had nothing to give the fans in a long time, and they've always wondered where my music's at now. And uh, so that's why I decided to, uh, you know, put out this newest album, Alta de Bueno, and, uh, because they, went, they, they wanted something, man, you know what I mean? So I just thought I'd give it to them, and shit, you know? I mean, you stay on the road all the time. You, you're touring. Oh, man, I'm so constantly. tired, big dog. I'm so tired, man, but it's cool, you know? California could be re- California could be really territorial, just as a state. You know, it's a huge. It's yeah, whole, yeah, yeah. Most of the coast. Like, do you ever run into being from Southern California? Runs to different challenges, and I don't know. Oh Bay, yeah, man, yeah, anything. yeah. For a minute, man, that was that was. You know, when we put out the music and everything, and try to get it played uh, in different parts of Cali, like North, Northern Cali or whatever. Uh, you know, even in San Diego, man, like. Uh, even people hate, like, sometimes, man, they don't want you being played, so they might call in some threats or whatever, like, you play that shit, you know, like, whatever it is, man, it's like, damn, man, you know what I mean? Like, but, you know, man, I'm I'm, I'm cool, dude, and I, I don't I don't got no bad blood or hate towards nobody, man, and, uh, you know, I've done a couple of shows up in, uh, up north, North California, man, and, uh, you know, just to try to prove that we can um, all come together and have a good time, and it didn't really go that way, you know? It didn't really go that way those couple of times, man, so, you know, so nowadays you might find, um, you know, these shows that we're doing, I don't go past uh, Fresno or, you know, or up, up upstate like that to to perform, even though I want to, man. I want to prove prove it wrong and, 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 and show that we can have a good time, man. I'm not there for no for no drama, you know what I mean? I'm there to show the people a good time like I've been doing, man. That's all I'm about, man. So, um, but unfortunately, we just try to, you know, not those shows out there with me on them because it's kind of a liability if something were to happen to somebody and uh which I don't want you know I don't want nothing happening to me obviously but I also don't want no, nothing happening to nobody else in the crowd either you know and you know get involved with some kind of dumb stuff over some you know dumb shit you know what I mean um, it sounds like you've had some some experiences like you said yeah, man, I've been booed many times. I've had, you know, bottles thrown at me and, you know. You had bottles thrown at and you. And things like that, man. But, but but it's all love. And I just like, man, dude, like, you know. Well, I mean, And then like, I guess that's what caused, like, the whole, like, not performing uh, up north. But but I got love for everybody, man. I got a lot of friends in San Jose, dude. You know, like, um, you know, they don't, they don't be doing that kind of stuff. They don't be causing any kind of trouble. They're just 
my my friends, man, good people, business people and stuff. You know what I mean? And uh, that's where my label's from. Um, and uh, hey, man, that the, they've been good to me my whole fucking uh, career with them, man. You know, became my best friends and everything, man. And my mom refused to let me fall. You know, so I got some good people in my corner, dude. It just feels like, cause I'm, you know, I'm someone who grew up on the other side of the country. I grew up in the south and and the east coast. And, yeah. You know, I just, it just seems like just things people know about California. And after living here for 10 years, I've even experienced, you know, through friends of mine or family of mine out here. Yeah. You know, that, yeah, it would make sense to me that someone from one part of California might run into, I guess, as you said, to have a bottle thrown at you in a, in a yeah, show. Yeah. Like, what happened with that? What, what was the situation? Uh, just a, a show in San Francisco um, uh, at the Lowrider Show. And uh, they had me go up there, man, and wear a bulletproof vest. The cops, had, the cops were there. They may put on a bulletproof vest for this, which I'm kind of glad they did, eh? Because uh, otherwise, the bottles probably would have hurt, you know. But uh, they and said they bounced off me, you know. But uh, you know, someone came up and threw a cup of soda on me, and it was dripping off my my brain and shit, man. And uh, but I just continued to rock it, you know. It, it didn't, it didn't, uh, didn't phase me like that, man. You know what I mean? I, I wasn't there for anything, any kind of drama, I didn't throw my mic down and say, fuck this or anything like that, man. I was, I just continued with my, my two jams and I took off, you know what I mean? Do you think it was because of, you know, you just being from San Diego? Yes, I think that's probably just what it is, man. That, that people have a, a a way of looking at me from, from being from down South or whatever. But in reality, man, I just don't understand, you know, what's going on with all that, you know? But uh, I mean, I get it. I get it to a certain extent, but uh, but nah, man, I come in peace, man. And I just uh, repping that brown pride, dude, you know what I mean? And that's what it's about. And I'm not out there hanging around with anybody that's, you know, starting any shit with anybody or, or doing anything like that, man. So if you're that kind of person, I kind of kind of stay away from you, you know what I mean? And uh, regardless, man, so, but um, but yeah, I learned a lot, man, through all those all those times and, you know, to, to actually go through that and, and uh, kind of find out how much people can't stand me if they're throwing shit at me, right? <laughs> but, you know, but, but continue through it and rock right through it, man. And, uh, you know, so it's a, it's a trip, man. You know, it's a trip, you know. But I'm not out there to prove any point. I just trying to have, try to have everybody come and have a good time, you know. That's that's what it is, man. And, um, and prove the whole thing wrong where we could just, you know, I'll just perform. I'm not talking no shit, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you end up um, going to Japan. Yeah, I went out there about four times now. And from what I understand, in Japan, they love Chicano culture. Yeah, yeah. Man, it's been a long time since I've been out there. I think I went out there in like 2005 or something. And I went to Okinawa like, uh, I think, three times. And then I did a five-city tour in like Tokyo and other areas around there, man. So um, that was kind of a trip, you know? What was it like? Were they, it was, you know, yeah. were they into low rider culture? Oh yeah, for sure, man, for sure, dog. You know, how did it look? How did it feel? Yeah, no, they look like fuck. They look like me. I was like, what the fuck? What's up, man? You know. But um, but they didn't really know like what I was saying at the time. And this is like 2005, man, or something like that, dude. So uh, shit, come to come to uh, like present time. Oh man, I mean, they got some badass rides out there now, man. They got some badass Chevys or cruising their fucking cars to the town, and uh, and I see more. Uh, Chicano like things going on out there through the through the internet now, but I've, it's been a long time since I've been there though. But um, it was already happening back then, and right now it's probably even more, man. You know, there there's a story. I saw you tell a story about seeing a Japanese guy with Chicano tatted on his. Oh back. yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, he fucking a little rough, but but you know the way they, the, the way he was communicating with me was different, so I didn't understand. And he just lifted up his shirt right here and fuck, I had a big old Chicano on his stomach. They were like, God damn, all right, fuck, man. I don't even have that. What the fuck, you know? Like, so, uh, so it was kind of a trip, man. But uh, it, yeah, it was cool, man. But real cool. They treated me well out there, and it was good, man. A, a long flight, though, man. You know, a long flight to get out there, and a long flight to get back, and and uh, but it was cool. It was a good experience for me to go out there and do that, man. Were you surprised to see how much they were embracing? your culture oh yeah i was way surprised man way surprised you know i wish i could talk to them more i wish i knew japanese so i could talk to them a little bit more you know what i mean but uh but uh but yeah it was cool though real real good time man yeah i mean 
it seemed like again you're real you're super prolific right you're dropping albums for at least once every on average every two years for about 20 years uh in 2014 you released recording in progress and then you go on hiatus and then you know now you're back with alt de bueno but it's been nine years since you released a, a full length what's been what's been happening yeah, just uh, I guess you know I was recording, uh, uh, recording a progress, man, and uh, you know uh, out in San Jose I was uh, staying out there, man, and I was um, recording that. And I don't know, we just kind of did that that album, and uh, it didn't really do too much, or I don't know if we just didn't promote it right, or didn't do anything with it, whatever. But it was just something that I did put together and everything, man, and uh, and just like life, just life was handed me some uh some bad things at the time you know and uh and um i guess it just threw off my uh my vibe you know what i mean i guess i don't know that's not like i quit or nothing like that man it was just kind of like my vibe wasn't there so i was kind of like just living life and just uh living day by day and trying to get through it you know what i mean it sounds like you know on things that you've shared so far that you know one you Always kept another job, even while you're writing raps. Oh yeah, yeah, right. Right. yeah, yeah, for sure. You've emphasized uh, several times how you do it for the love. Oh were yeah, you, yeah. Were you writing rhymes over this nine year period with when you weren't releasing music? Were you still creating and maybe just not putting it out? Yeah, I was still creating. I was still writing here and there, man. I, but it was the you know like you know how we're gonna do this, you know, like even like Alto the Bueno after coming out, you know, what almost ten years later uh, from R.I.P. You know, um, you know. Um, that's a lot of you know driving and uh, putting on instrumentals in the car and writing and writing my raps and just practicing them. So over like years, I mean, I just I, I developed all these jams, you know, that I just that I had that I knew were keepers, you know. Um, and so that's where all the bundle came from, man. I just kind of like and me and fingers were just gonna put it out, you know, just get something to the fans, you know. What I mean, I called them up. I said, hey, man, I don't want to do this this thing. So just me and him were gonna put it out. No label involved or whatever, you know, nothing. Just just throw it out. But then uh. You know, um, but I'm good. I'm good friends with uh, John Lopez from Upstairs Records, man. And we got other businesses going on, and and uh, so he's my business partner and everything, man. So you know, he's all let's do it, man. So, no brainer, let's do it, man. Cause we, you know, we make money together, and and that was just the right thing to do. And um, came together with the team, you know, and uh, and put this album out. You know what I mean? It seems like there must have been something that, you know, ended up being positive. I mean, you talked about you were going through some rough patches oh, yeah, in yeah. that nine-year period, but if you came out with an album, you put out a project, you know. Yeah, yeah, well, like, hey, man, can't keep a good man down, big dog, you know what I'm saying? Even though sometimes it's like, fuck, man, I, you know, it, it, it got a little rough, man. Like, fuck, dude, like, I, I don't understand what's going on, you know, with my life and everything, but, um, hey, man, just uh, just kept on moving like I've always been doing. You know what I mean? Like I say, I'm, you know, uh, I'm, I'm gonna get through everything just like I always do. You know what I mean? And uh, that's just kind of what I got to do, man. I gotta just keep on moving. I, I got, I, uh, I've had bad people come into my life all the time, man. You just gotta fucking weed them out, dog, and just keep fucking moving straight, man, and and keep moving with or without them. You know what I mean? And uh, and that's just kind of what kept me going, man. You know? Yeah. So, but a lot of bad things too, man. I just didn't understand, like. You know, or someone could hate me so much over music or whatever, you know. But you know, you, did you have an incident or did something I specific just, happen? I mean, yeah, just things, just just things. I've you know, fight, fighting a lot, dude. You know, over 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 that. You know what I mean? But no one really hears about it because I never really talked about it. Like I say, it's not it's not everybody. It's a few knuckleheads maybe that you know just want to prove a point and everything, man. I, I remember. I remember back in the days, one of my primos, man, like, you know, even this way back in the days, he wanted to mess up somebody, I forget, just to do it, just to say he did it, you know what I mean? So that, you know, always, you know, carried with me where, hey, man, someone's going to want to run up and do that shit to me just because they, they want to say they did that shit, you know what I mean? And uh, and it's happened, yeah, a couple times, many times, you know, yeah, a few times, man, so... So that could throw you off a little bit, you know what I mean? And throw off your vibe and everything, man. So, um, but other than that, man, it's just, it just it just throws off my vibe for a little bit, then I'm right back at it. I feel like there's there's a, you know, just from a macro standpoint, you know, some of the things that you already described in this conversation, just north and south, like, you know, sueños, norteños, you know? Yeah, I yeah, feel yeah, like yeah. just that energy supersedes even individuals and 
California in a lot of ways. Just like you see that with, you know, Bloods or Crips, or you see that with, you know, just different, you know, different different organizations like that. You know? Yeah, and I'm more like, you know, as long as you respect me and you know, and I respect you and it's a it's a mutual respect and you know, that's all it is, man. Just it's respect, man. That's it, man. I I never go to a place and and I like the place is mine or walk through it like it's mine or or, or thinking I'm badass or nothing like that. Never, man. Always a respect thing, dude. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's just kind of what that is, man. So, I mean, no disrespect to nobody, you know. And, and I know what I look like, and and uh, and how I rock it and shit, man. But uh, but now nah, I don't mean no disrespect to nobody ever, man. And uh, carry myself with a lot of respect. And I've, I've I've run into some bad people, and I've run into some good people, man. That that, that have met me and uh, take the time to be like, okay, man, this is cool, man. You know what I mean? And uh, he ain't about that shit, you know what I mean? And I ain't about that shit, you know? Man, I'm just like busy with, uh, you know, uh, obviously with this new album now and my, my family and and the other uh, other obligations I got with uh, with my boy John, other things that I got going on with him. And so I'm just busy doing all that stuff, man, trying to trying to make sure I make it home every night. You know what I'm saying? That gotta like make it home, man. Gotta make it home, dude, you know? That sounds like another good thing that happened, you know, your family, your family came. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I met her and, uh, and uh, yeah, she's pretty much uh, changed my life, man, you know. She changed my life, pretty much saved my life. I thought I was going to die where I was at, you know, pretty soon, you know. If it was, was going to happen then, it was going to happen sometime because, fuck, man, I've, uh, you know, been through some things where, you know, they really uh, seems like they don't want me around and shit, man. But, uh, but I'm not like that, man, so, it's, you know. So she pretty much, I think, saved my life, man, and fucking uh, got her pregnant with my baby boy, dude, and uh, and now he's hitting the stage with me now, man. Just turned five, and uh, you know, just a, a big blessing in my life. And uh, now I just got to make sure that I'm there for him, and make sure that everybody, uh, make sure that he sees how much everybody like respects me as a man, dude, and uh, and and how I treat people, you know, wherever I go, and to always be a good kid and uh, and treat people well, man, you know. Do you think you're always like that? Like, as a, do you think your your experiences might have helped put this frame of mind that you have now? I think everything I've been through, man, just kind of like I've always been cool like that, though. I've always been cool and cool with people and stuff, you know. Like, never had a problem like that, man. You know, it was it wasn't you know, it wasn't a real crazy life like that, like that. Even though I mean, I did get shot. I mean, that's pretty crazy, but like. You know, most people don't get shot like that, but but I'm not saying it was crazy. I, I mean, I got through that, man. You know what I mean? And and uh, and uh, but every experience, man, through through everybody that I've met, even if even if we've had differences or whatever, you know, I don't hate nobody, man. I got no. It's not like I got bad blood with people, man. I just you know like, but if you've ever done me dirty, then you know I probably won't fuck with you again, man. That's just kind of what it is, and and uh, you know, there's no time for that. You know, I've, I've no time to let you do that to me twice, you know what I mean? It's just, it's, it's not gonna happen, man. So, you know, um, I forgot where I was at right now, but I said I get lost in my thoughts and shit, man. But, uh, but, um, but anyways, yeah, but uh, for my son to see how, many, how, how the people respect me and uh, and what I'm doing right now for everybody, man, the, the shows, I mean, everyone just has a good time and, and, uh, and I love that he can see that, man. So I'm hoping he treats everybody good and, and uh, grows up to be good people and, um, and, and does good things for people, man, wherever this life is going, man, whatever this world is going to right now. It's, I just hope the best for him, and I'm trying to show him the best way. I think your new album, Alter Bueno, does a great job of balancing that, right? I mean, you've, yeah. got, you know, you've got old records and that soul. that They just both feel like quintessential what Lil Rob is about, feel-good music, neighborhood music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you've got, you know, Moment in Time and Thank You, Baby. That sounds like a very present perspective that you have or at least you know you've gotten to over the past nine years or the gaps between these two projects yeah, yeah. and then you have tracks like one and done where you're like hey if you you do me dirty why, yeah why dude, and it's not just rappers man i mean i'm you know i'm, I'm talking like that but it's, it's not just rappers man and you know like i said in uh hey there miss brown you know it's like uh it's not just uh i forgot what i say man uh it's not just uh acquaintances but also family you know, family's done us dirty, man. Like fucking, whoa, man, I can't believe you did that shit, dog. And I, now you're out, you know what I mean? You're fucking out, dude, that's it. Um, so it just depends on uh, on what it is. And, you know, and if people are being sneaky, well then, you know, they shouldn't be around you, man, you know what I mean? 
one of my friends in San Jose told me that, you know, they, they said, hey man, my dad always told me, man, if you can't, if you can't leave the room and, and, uh, and leave your wallet and your girl in there with, with, with your boy or whatever like that, if you can't trust them, then they don't belong in your life, man. Like, you know what I mean? If you can't trust them with your wallet or your girl, fuck out, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, uh, you know, but um, that's just one little saying that he said, but uh, but yeah, I'm not, I, don't, I don't got time for people being sneaky and, um, you know, and trying to do things behind my back or something like that, you know what I mean? Whatever it is, whatever it may be, man, like, you know, the, whatever, you know. You know, you're, I, I think it's really, it's really, I appreciate your humility. You know, you definitely have, you're revered in, you know, multiple communities. You're revered in hip hop, you're revered in where you're from, and um, you're revered globally, you know, for your music and yeah, yeah, yeah. and everything brought to the table. And, you know, you get called the Jay-Z of, of Chicano rap, and like most compliments, you seem to, you know, shake them off real quick and say thank you and keep it moving, you know. But I look at the career that you put together, right? I mean, this is 30 plus years, yeah. right? Um, you not only have uh, put out, what, five or six charting albums, you have, you know, top 40 songs, top 10 songs, you know what I mean? Um, and you've worked with so many other legends as well. You've worked with E-40, you know, you've worked with Nori, you know, you've worked with Game, Pitbull, Baby Bash, you know, yeah, like, yeah. you know, how do you, it, f let's say from a, from an artist standpoint, MC standpoint, you know, a writer standpoint, is it different when you're writing a song by yourself or when you're about to hop on a track with Paul Wall, for example? Like, do you, does your mind move a little differently? Um, yeah, well, I mean, it just, it, it's, it, the way those uh, songs even came about, man, like the one with the game, um, that hit us up to do it. So then I wrote a, a like a 16 bar verse and I sent it back to them. So I wasn't really in the studio with like Paul Wall or, or uh, Crooked Eye or um, the game, you know what I mean? Or, or anybody, man. Uh, so we all kind of, well, I don't know if they sent their things and they must have too, but you know, so I wasn't in the studio with them, but um, just kind of sent my verse in, you know, and that's, and that's what it was. But, uh, um, the other ones too. I mean, most of them are like that. Most of them are like that. Not not really in the studio with them. The Julio Voltio one with uh with uh, him and Pitbull, uh, uh, bumper the bumper song. Man, we shot that video in uh, Miami, and uh, that was a real collaboration between uh between us. But we weren't in the studio together, you know. But we just shot the video together, you know. Same thing with the Nori one. Sent my verse in, and um, they did what they did, and um, yeah, we shot the video together. So that was a real collaboration with them. Um, but some of them, some of them, I, I don't even know. I, maybe I, I I do a favor for like one of the producers I know, a friend of mine. I'll, I'll, I'll shoot him up, uh, do him a bottle real quick, man, and jump on a verse for somebody, and then that somebody will go get somebody else on the on the song too. You know, like like a Busy Bone or something like that. You, you might see that, but I I never knew Busy Bone was gonna be on the on the track. You know, with me and you know, I was like, oh shit, this motherfucker's gonna tear me up. Like, you know, like that down. You know. But um, but uh, but to be in the studio with people now, I've really, I haven't really done that with, with all these guys, you know. Yeah. Does it, it does it feel cool to say that you work with so many different, also major people in hip hop? Yeah, yeah. It feels it feels good that they would uh, you know, hit me up and want me to be a part of what they're doing, man. You know what I mean? So that's that's pretty cool, you know. That Nori one was that was a fun one, man. You know, with Fat Joe and. And uh, Nina Sky and you know other dope artists, my Chingo Bling and uh, I forget who else on that on that out on that record, but uh, that was a good time, man. You know what I mean? And um, felt very, you know, uh, it was dope for them to hit me up to want me to do something and represent the Chicano the Chicano guy. You know what I mean? So that was dope. Do you feel like you've helped forward Chicano rap? Uh, I mean, I'm not I'm not sure, man, but I, I would think so. You know what I mean? I would think so. Been doing it for a long time, man, and uh, was able to get some jams on the radio thanks to uh, you know my label and uh, Upstairs Records and John and Joe Lopez, man, and uh, and um, so that alone was a, a milestone to, to 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 do. You know what I mean? And um, could I have kept it going, man? Probably. You know what I mean? But I don't know. I kind of just slowed down here and there. You know what I mean? Life is a trip, dude. You know, you go through different things, man, and. Uh, and so sometimes I wasn't sure if I really wanted that for me, you know, that life, whatever. But, but then shit, man. Not, nowadays, I mean, that's just who I am, you know. I know that's what I, I know that's what I do, and that's what they know me for. And 
and I got a lot of respect for it too, man. You know what I mean? So it's a, it's a, it's a good thing, man. All to the bueno. Real good thing. All, right now it's all to the bueno, man. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, it's, it's a, it's a feel good thing, man. I, I took my son to SeaWorld yesterday for his birthday, man. I got spotted there, fucking took pictures with a bunch of people there and went to Target this morning, took a picture with someone there. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, you know what I mean? So it's kind of like, it's just, uh, getting noticed a lot, man. And, uh, and, uh, yeah, it's just a crazy thing, man. It's all happening all, all over again, like 2005, you know, if not even more now, you know? Yeah. But, um, I think, uh, I think Latino rap, Hispanic rap, Chicano rap, they all seem bigger than ever to me right now. Yeah. You know, and I mean, just global superstars are coming from Latino culture. Yeah. Yeah. For sure, man. Like I've like Peso Pluma is blowing up right now. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I see him doing them, doing them, uh, concerts with Bobby D man. Shout out to Bobby D man. Um, Sold out arenas, man. That's dope, man. You know what I mean? Those some big-ass concerts, too. And my son likes it, too. He'll be listening to him and singing his songs and everything, man. So, hey, thank you, Peso. You know, thank you for that, man. I've, uh, yeah, that's some dope shit, man. And uh, congratulations on everything, man. Uh, um, So, yeah, real dope, man. Pretty, yeah, way dope, way dope. I've done some things, too, with uh, some dudes from Mexico. I sat down. I did something with him a while back, too. Yeah, that was a real collaboration, too. And, Oh, shot, a, shot a video with him. Yeah, Sakan, yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm down to do things, man, with, with people all the time, man. You know, just depends on what it is, you know. But um, Are you more in a, in a more creative space now? I mean, like, just thinking about this logistically, right? You just said uh, you'd gone away for nine years, and yeah. now, you're, now you're back and you're out. Do you feel like you want to drop more frequently? Do you want to collaborate with more uh, people? Yeah, man. I mean, it's, I guess I guess what it is now, man. Like, uh, I guess when I first signed and everything, it was a, uh, it, it was a, it was uh, it used to be fun, and then it became like I have to write these jams for this album. I have to get this shit done, you know. That we got a deadline coming up, like this and that. So this also the bueno. There was no pressure at all, you know, no pressure at all. So when I, when I, when I, sh when I showed my boy the the, the 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 jams, he liked them all. You know what I mean? So like, fuck, dude, these are oh, dude, like clean. Let's put them out, man. We ready, you know what I mean. So let's uh, let's do it, man. So we did it, and it was. I guess that was the best part of it. No pressure. Back to the the fun of it, and just uh, writing what I want to write, and 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 uh, being able to take my time with the uh, with the jams and make sure they come out, you know, like like with perfection. You know what I mean? A real clean sounding, you know. And you know, and fingers did his job on that, man, and just make sure I was I was sounding clean on that mic, you know. And um, everything was already written and uh, ready to go, and you know I didn't waste nobody's time, and uh, and we we knocked it out real quick, man. You know, ten jams real quick. Well, we knocked out eleven jams, but we couldn't get the other sample cleared, man. So that one didn't come out yet. That's a good one to leak. Yet, it ain't going yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, um, that's all I have. Is there anything you want to add or share? Is there anything you want to? let people to uh, uh point yeah. people towards or yeah man like I guess uh I guess man just uh just be good people man you're gonna if you want to try to do something in life man no matter what it is I guess man uh don't burn no bridges man and uh be good people that don't step on nobody's toes man because it could bite you in the ass 20 years later big dog and uh you know I hate to be the one to say I told you so but I told you so you know but uh, <laughs> but um just be good people man and treat people right man no matter what what, what you're doing man and uh don't let no one change you and change who you are, man, and uh, and everything should be fine, man. Everything should fall into place if you're good people, you know. And um, that's about it, man. I just show love to everybody, man. And if you see me, if you see me, if you want to be cool, man, say what's up, man. Say what's up. I'm cool, dog. You know what I mean. And, uh, and that's about it, man. If I see you around, say what's up, hey. Say what's up. And it's also the and it's also the bueno, man. From here to LA to San Jose to Sacramento to every, you know, to the East Coast and back and fuck, hey, man. It's all love, big dog. And um, like I said, man, brown pride, homeboy, no matter where you're from, I don't give a shit. Eh? Just, uh, it's all about respect, eh? That's what it is, man. So I respect you, you respect me, and it's all to the bueno. Your homeboy little Robin, I'm out, eh? Yeah.